Mm -hmm. So I know that you teach all over the world. Yep. You hit how many countries did you have last year? I think it was sixteen, Jesus. maybe. And it's all done in English. Okay, it's all Is that done in English. Question? It was getting yes. there. Okay. Yep. So the other thing you talked about a school in uh, LA being the last mm -hmm. trade school left. Yep. Now I know you love to travel. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider opening up your own trade school? Yes, I have considered it. And when I have my workshops in my shop in Mazeppa, it's almost like that because I have 12 bunks that I built in my shop so people can stay there. And how long are those classes? It's usually a week long where you come in Sunday night, you got Monday, Tuesday, and the middle day we take a field trip. Okay. You go to Red Wing Boot, you go over to Wisconsin, get a sandwich. We really look at signs and stuff, really have fun. Plus, there's Gemini Letters, it's 40 minutes away. We do a little tour there. And mainly, my town is 800 people, and it's got two bars and a gas station. And you can really get the, the feel of the town and, and how I'm a part of the town, so you can see everything. A job will actually come in, and I'm talking to the person about it. Yeah. A lot of times, somebody in the class will have them get in on it, too. Well, here's what the guy said, we're going to do this now. That way, when they go back, they know how to talk and realize how much it should be and this and that. So you get the whole thing. And uh, I don't think schools really do that. They didn't do it when I was in school. We never yeah. talked about business. And I try to do that in my class to say, here's what happens. Because I get a lot of questions of how much is this? Are you going by the square footage? Are you going by the letter? And I go by what it's valued at. How much is that worth to that person? Because you're going to look at it later, geez, I only charged that much. Look at the money he's making off that. Yeah. The business part has to be the right with the training of it, too. That's the, the aspect I try to be different about. It's, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but what are you going to charge for that? And how's that going to come into effect to keep this livelihood that you want to do? Because you get all giddy, oh, things are going really good, and... But are you charging? Sometimes I just want to do that job, so I'll do it for almost nothing. Don't shortchange yourself and don't shortchange the industry. Sure. Well, that guy's doing good work. He's only charging 100 bucks. I mean, you got overhead. you got insurance. you got families to feed. Do what it's worth. Because people think, well, I'm not good enough yet. The customer doesn't know that. They just want four lease, four sale, phone number to, to make it work, to make them money. So do it appropriately as a business. Yeah. You think about it. And once you get that, then you can go back to the giddy part of, ooh, I'd love to do this. It's such a, you know, it's not about the end destination, it's the journey. Okay. Do you make a living sign painting or is it just a hobby? I've always made a living with sign painting. Now more days I, I teach more, but I never let go of my shop. I still have customers all the time. Sometimes I do the job in another country on the road teaching, and I just mail it. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times, because it's such a small town, well, you're never there. Well, sometimes I'm in Minneapolis, or I'm in Melbourne, Australia. What does it matter? I have people in line. It's like McDonald's. I can't put you in front. They're going to be mad. Yeah. What, what do you want me to do? Now when I come home, it's, how long are you home for? I need this done. And I seem to get more done that way because, all right, hey, I'm leaving next Wednesday. I gotta have it done, and you gotta have your half down to me, and then I'll get you in line, and then it'll be done. Cause I gotta go. And it's all about commitment, just like uh, the guys at Colossal in New York say. They gotta paint it right on top. Early is on time. And if you if you know Doc at the L.A. Trade Tech, if you're two seconds late, you're kicked out for the day. He stresses to be on time, and that carries out in life. You've got to do that. That's some serious stuff by Doc, but he's, he wants you to learn. He's, his heart is into it, just like me. I want you to do this. This isn't playing around. But we're still going to have fun. But come on, if you're into this, put the time into it. Like I teach the three Ds, desire, dedication, and discipline. You've got to discipline yourself to stay on it, to keep it. So you get better. People see in these four-day classes when they start, they're really intimidated. And I've been there. I know that feeling. So I think I'm a better teacher that way to go, oh, I know what you're feeling. Like, I can see it. I can come over and go, how are you feeling? You don't like this, do you? Mm. My job is to the confidence go up. 
And then that last day, they were just, I did it, I did it. Now keep that going. And I have feedback from them too. What do you think I should do for another class to tell them? Put yourself in my shoes. I gotta sing, I'm Willie Nelson and I gotta sing on the road again. 30 times a year, what would you do to me? So, you know, they'll, they'll offer some things or I'll just keep it fun. Who knows, I mean, that's the way it's gotta be. But that's the same with sign painting every day. You don't know what's gonna walk in the door. It might be this guy, I want this huge, huge mural with big money. Or it's your neighbor who wants his mailbox done. You all have to have the same time. And then you you got to keep it right down the middle, too. You're doing great. You made a lot of money on the job. Yay! Or, geez, I lost my ass on that one. I shouldn't do that again. you got to be right down there. Because they want that service. And they see this. Because you're putting it out there. Oh, I'm this guy that does this. They're curious. I get a lot of that. I've seen your work all over. I want this done. Okay? Give me the respect of doing that. Don't dummy me down and just, well, no, we didn't want it that way. Well, then go somewhere else. I do this. You wanted this. You're paying for this. Let me do my job. Uh, did you have somebody that helped you and or inspired you to get into the craft art form? There was lots of painters. There were the old guys back then. They're all gone. But that's how it was. It was male-dominated. And they primarily worked out of their garages and stuff. And when I got into this, I found where they were and who they were. So they were the inspiration. Their stock cars, their everyday thing, because there was no vinyl back then, which I'm lucky when it came up. But uh, I bugged and bugged them. You know, can I come in your shop and help you on a weekend or something? And they had nothing to do with that. And I use that in my teaching now to go, if anybody asks me, I will definitely show them whatever I can because that was a struggle for me. There was no internet or anything. Every little thing I could get, a sign book or whatever, I was in every page. So I'm hungry to sponge all that in. So I'd say that the sign painter that was most influential to me was Don Springer, and it was great because he was an old salty dog that just, ah, you don't want to do this and all that. And it was always, I'll show you kind of mentality. And even my dad was like, yeah, it looks good, but didn't really appreciate it, he just didn't show it, but I think he knew it after a while, but just feed him a little bit, he's hungry, he'll get it, and I try to, try to do that in the classes too, where I'm going to show you enough, but you're going to show me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the leash out, you're going to do this, and then don't get the big head after that, help somebody else, that's what you do, you turn around, and that's what the letterhead showed me, it's like, there's no here and there. You could leave your ego at the door and you come in and show somebody something. That's what it's about. That spirit still going today since 1975 in Denver when we started. So there was never really anybody I went to every day that did this and that besides my old man. And he was busy raising kids, us three boys, and cutting hair, and he was a janitor at the school. But in between all that somewhere was me taking it all in, even drawing on a chalkboard on napkins, finally get the signs to do in school, the prom this weekend, go fight win, all that. I was just into everything. I always thought, where's the next Mike Meyer coming that wants to be like that? If that kid walks in, boy or girl, I just grab him. That's what I'm doing to this day. How quickly can somebody go out and start making some money on the street? I would say, in this day and age, with the videos you can download on the internet, it's a lot faster than the old days. Um, I'd say a good two years. You know, I, I tell some people it's going to be about a five-year thing to get a really nice script going. But it depends on the person. It depends on where they're working and how they want to do it. If they're that fired up for it, you could go even quicker than that. But there's so many varieties on how they come into sign painting today. There's tattooing, there's graffiti, there's graphic arts, and we're working at a grocery store and all of a sudden they're in the signs. And then there's so many things for it today to, to self-teach you. So in the old days it was always, uh, you got to have a five-year apprenticeship to be the journeyman. But sometimes you were doing journeyman work. But, you know, it's, it's 
all on how you, you want to take it. So for somebody just viewing this, I would say you got to put in a good two years. And speaking of that, when I go overseas to a lot of countries, I see where sign painting did die in the entire country. And they ask me, why didn't it die in the United States? And I say, well, I think it's because we're such a big country and people were doing just fine without a computer. And like, I don't need that. So they never bought one, they just kept going. And that's how it survived, because it's so big. It's in the middle of Kansas or, or even New Jersey. I don't need that, I got plenty of work, I don't need a computer. So it survived. It, it had that rush of the computer and now it's kind of, there it is. It's still just a tool, it'll always be just a tool. Whatever you're using in the back room, it's the same as a saw. I have a computer, I've had one 25 years, I wouldn't be without it, because it's a tool to take artwork I have and make money with it. But I'm not dwelling on the money, we're just being working smarter and not harder. That's great. This is going to be a loaded question, and uh, if you don't agree with what I want you to say, I'm going to dub over whatever your answer is. <laughs> but what is your, uh, uh, what is the, let me see here. What is your go-to paint? What's your favorite paint to use? My favorite paint to use right now, and I hope for a long time to come, is Alpha Enamel from Alpha 6 because it's only been a year. 2018 we came here to do the workshop in Detroit and I remember it like this. Where can we put our paint? And you said, this table over here. Okay, can you get that stuff off there? Well, that's my paint. I want you to use my paint. And of course, never seeing it or meeting you before, I'm like, what is this? Uh, well, okay, we'll try it. I tried it. I like it. So, I run with it. Because the other, the other companies wouldn't give me any support. And I thought, here's one guy like me. I can support him. If I have any problems, I call him and he's going to take care of it because this is his livelihood. The other ones, I've tried them. Well, we'll get back to you. We're working on it in the lab. That doesn't work for my customer. And the colors and everything coming out, it feels like if I had to do a paint company, that's how I would do it. So that's why I support Alpha 6. Some old guys are saying, oh, Meyer, are you running with this new paint? Well, how does it last? Well, I don't know. So far, it's great. You know, well, I do five trucks a day. I can't depend on that. Well, then don't. Somebody had to do it for one shot and Ronan way back when. So here we are with Alpha 6. Why not? I think it'd be smarter because he has a chemist, which they did too, but He's done the steps that you're supposed to. Plus, he's there to listen for you, and whatever you want to make new, he'll at least try it. Why not? That works for me. That's what I'm all about. That's why I use Alpha 6. And the other products, I'm, I'm going to be getting into use them. I want to use everything. To give the feedback, the size, how about the acrylics, this and that. i got one person to go to, and that's what I like. And you should too. Love it.